Good morning. Hey. Have you had a good morning so far? Yeah, it's been chaotic. Good morning to whoever is out there. I'm going to check and see. In Let Facebook me. land and YouTube land. That's right. Hello. That's right. Let me, uh, let me, uh, I think your mom might have been the first one on, actually. My mom is a yes. dedicated lady. <laughs> Let me turn the volume down. That's no good. Cole, turn the volume down. Oh, hey, Mandy. Good to see you. Talk to us who's Amy. here, bro. We got I never uh, know. Mandy. Oh, you never know? Okay, no. we got Mandy's here. Amy's here. Good to see you. Trini's here. Good to see you this morning. Jonah Kramer's here, and he is, he actually, is actually here. here. He's actually here. He's here. Can y'all do that funny thing you did last time? Yes. Like when you flip it? Hey, there we are. <laughs> That's enough time. Hey, for Beverly. You. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Kenny, what's That's up, buddy? That's enough out of you. Kenny Greer's here. Kenny, what's up, man? Yes. Mary's here. Oh, there's a Bambi's here. Clarence is here. Good morning, Clarence. Good morning, Clarence. Terry Lyles. What up? Terry, Terry's cool. <laughs> I like Terry. No, He's I do awesome. too. I do too. I love Terry. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Actually, my. Look at this. Good to see you. This they got us Michael. a stand. They Look got us a stand, thing. so we can put that down. We'll kind of track along as people. Elaine, good to see you this morning. Man, I'll be shocked if people are up, man. Fireworks were nuts last night at our yeah, house. Yes, so what time did you get to bed? Well, I laid down at like about 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I don't even know what time I dozed off because it was just chaos. I felt like the house was shaking. How is Jefferson in 4th of July? Like uh, Jefferson, people shooting fireworks? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know where they were shooting fireworks, all but over uh, right. all over. I think it was everybody's house so far as. All right, so we got Christy Drew. Good to see you. She's What's married up? to the beard. Yeah, the beard. I must say, probably the best beard I've ever seen, though. Yeah, he's up there. By far, by far. Yeah, yeah. it's red, too. Like. It is red, yeah. yeah. Anna, good to see you. Beverly, good to see you. The Marlows are on the Stokes. Well, at least one half of the Stokes. Melinda, good to see you. Melinda. Hopefully Steve's watching with you, Yeah, too. I don't know what Steve's up to. Steve's Corey probably. Rhodes, our buddy. Man, I think it's time for the... Uh, yeah, actually, the we're, at, we're at 40 people already. Man. So it's time for the lobby song. Let's do it. Let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> right that, you know. Wake up, it's a Sunday morning. Lobby. Wake up, put away all your hobbies. We got coal, we got Chris, just like MC Hammer. You can't touch this. You know, MC Hammer reminds me of... Uh, the 90s. The 90s. Yeah, And absolutely. in the 90s, I must have to admit that I might have once seen a boy band. Oh, yeah, man. NSYNC or uh, Backstreet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell I'd never want to hear you say, I want it that way, cause the lobby, it wants it that way. Yay! Yeah. That, was, Woo! that was a pretty, great ending there. That was a pretty solid ending. That was a pretty solid give ending. Give that ending a, a good five. Yes. I'll give it a good five. <laughs> Backstreet Boys, Katie says shout out right there. Yeah, massive Backstreet Boys, yeah. Yeah, NSYNC was kind of more like, I was probably, I was a little bit more NSYNC guy. Yeah, they had a little bit, to me, they had a little bit more vocal talent. Yeah. That, a little bit more that dancing. That could go pretty debatey, yeah. That would just they, had, they had a ton of, like, dancing ability, man. Them boys yeah. could dance. I actually had a friend in uh, high school. So, yeah, you know, going back a little bit, he uh, actually met the Backstreet Boys. Did some rec he didn't do recording with them, but they were in the same studio in Orlando. Yeah, man, that's where they, they like in the day. grew all the. That's right. That's where they like had like a garden full of uh, boy bands back then. Yes, Carolyn, so, good to see you this morning. Yeah, so man, what a cool day! What a cool day! We've got like uh, we've invited like um, for the service today. Yes, we've invited. Uh, I don't know if this is a secret. If it is, oh well. Oh well, this is well. It's my last lobby for a little bit too. So it is, yeah. They can't really fire me from the lobby. That. They can't actually fire me, fire me for my job. Feel a little sad about that. 
But it's a good reason that'd be your last lobby. Yeah, no, we're coming back next week. That's right. Coming uh, back. Coming back. Hey, we're back next week. We're back next Come week. On. We uh, we've invited like somebody some, give us some hearts and thumbs up about coming back next week. Yeah, y'all better wake up, up out there. But we are doing. Yes. Uh, Jesse, who's actually here, is giving us a lot of hearts. Uh, yes. Uh, Thanks, Jesse. But we've invited like the we've invited the staff to come. And to kind yes. of chill with their family at the service today. Awesome. So I think I can say that, which is cool. We're just kind of giving it a little bit of a test run. Yes. And uh, of course, appropriate social distancing if we would need to. Yeah, sure. Yeah. However, we However. Need to do. However we need so to. So I keep looking at your phone call. I need to be looking at the camera. Yes. Hearts are going up. Hey. Yeah, man. Hearts, smiley faces. I'm just glad to see that the people that usually hit the mad emoji have kind of figured that out, or either gotten over whatever was bugging them that's true so that's true. i'm excited so about back that. to the fireworks story yeah so jefferson alive with fireworks mm -hmm. last night yes massively how about y'all banks county man we actually went up to anderson south carolina up great towards place. uh where deb's dad and stepmom live had a great time she is by far one of the best cooks ever deb uh deb is a great cook <laughs> I set too. you up bro <laughs> i set you uh, up but yes uh yeah we call her Nana. But Deb, you call Deb that? No, no. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to throw a slap. No, yeah, 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 she will. That's okay. uh, but she's an awesome cook. So she cooked. They had some friends over. And my kids, so this is this is kind of 4th of July. Yeah. They have like a little small, like, you know, six-foot round pool that's only two foot deep. Okay. I had We had quite the fun time hanging out with the, like I did. I jumped in the pool with the kids. It's not even, you know. I mean, it's not even this big. It was so much fun, though. Was it like one you got at Walmart? Yeah, fifty dollar pool. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. Kind of big round. Oh yeah, I've got two of those. Holds like house. a thousand gallons or something. Yeah, man. Yeah. So it was super fun. It was fun. You actually jumped in. I actually jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> Were you sore today? Uh, well, okay. Different story. Have you ever had this happen? Yeah, probably. Yes. And maybe you out there have had this happen. Uh, so our air conditioner went out in our house. Okay. Had that happen before? Yes. Fortunately, I had a good buddy whose name is Christopher Fouch who actually gave us a window unit because I needed one. Okay. That's a cool awesome, story. Man. That's great. So I went, uh, I just went, you know, old school and put the window unit in the living room. We put blankets up on all the areas to just make our living room one room. And okay. we, everybody just slept in the living room. Okay. Right? So this is the epic part. I was on the couch, which is not that bad sometimes, you know. Yep. Yeah, every once in a while I get kicked to the couch. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Well, especially when you got a snake in the attic. <laughs> That's right, when you got a snake in the attic, like this guy does. Yeah. Um, but then I woke up, and I must have slept weird or something, and I had the old crick in the neck. So yes. Like, you know, and I walk weird, and your neck's all tender. So. Now, I bro, did you, like, tie something to, like, the, the, the window unit, like they do in the stores? No, I, I should have. That would have been really like good. Like a red piece oh, of man. paper. That would have been like. awesome. Yeah. Anyways, was, I always see that. It was pretty epic, I guess I want though. you to know that it really worked. But then this great guy who does... AC work uh, named Schaefer Heating and Air came and yeah. fixed it right up the next morning. Yeah. So that was amazing. So awesome, shout man. out to Schaefer Heating and Air. Leonard. Amazing. Leonard, you're yeah. amazing. So, Leonard. hey, Jesse's Better Half is watching. Hello, Lily. Hey, Lily. Yeah, so Jesse actually. Glenda, Donnie, hello. Jesse had a birthday like Christy. a couple days ago. Yes. And how old are you, Jesse? He's 15. 14. Oh, 14. 14. My bad, dude. He does look 14, though. He does. Look at his face. Look how innocent it looks. Doesn't it look like it will always tell you the truth? And he's still wearing a Falcons hat and knows zero about sports. <laughs> he does and knows zero. zero. I mean, Jesse, can you count on one hand how many times you've actually seen a football? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. They have laces in them. Also air. Hey, Glenda, good to see you this morning. And you can throw it. Yes. It's amazing. All right, so yep. epic fireworks story. So jumping in the little kitty like pool. Is that a kitty pool? That wouldn't be a kitty pool because my kids have little kitty pools. So this is like a, I don't even know what you would call it at this point. Plastic. It's about two foot high. It's big, you know, round. Inflatable? You, you, no, not inflatable. You fill it up and the water pressure pushes it out. It's about two, foot, two foot deep, two and a half foot deep. Oh, that's a good pool, man. I think it helped my neck though. Like it, you know, just kind of playing around and having fun. We made a whirlpool is what we did. We literally oh. were running around in a circle. Anybody ever Somehow done I can before? picture you doing that, dude. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that in an above-ground pool? Yes, or yes. in an in-ground pool. Yes. We used to do that all the time. 
where I would hold on to the side and go, yes. and then try to go the opposite way. Yes. And yes. then like your fingers are like blistered, yes. man, from like the concrete. And uh, somebody's laughing, and it's almost <laughs> hideous. <laughs> In the they background, said, it's they said, scary almost. They said Jesse is uh, <laughs> handsome, by the way. Oh, Adam Brown said. Adam that. Brown said that. Thanks, that, Adam. That, yeah. Somebody just laughed out there. Yeah. Now let me be honest with you. It scared me, and I also want to go see if they have candy. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> A little weird. All right, Whatever. back to fireworks. So we had good fireworks. Yeah. Uh, I went to one of those places uh, right across the um, the border. Mm -hmm. That would be the border of Georgia and South Carolina. Yep. First exit, the big red one right there. I forget the name of it, but man, incredible warehouse. I would say it is a little scary going in there because you realize there's every firework and there's probably millions of fireworks in there. And if somebody laughs like that, they may set them But off. at the same time, yes. And at the same time, it's super fun and exhilarating to be in there because you realize that there's nothing but fireworks. My, yeah, and my life's, <laughs> my life's at, at stake here, yeah. I had been in a fireworks store forever, man. Yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a great experience. In fact, it was, it was myself and my daughter that went in there, yeah. and uh, we had a blast. It was so my, cool. my wife sent you a text about something yeah. we need to announce. Have we? Uh, I'm some, not sure exactly how she to. She sent it to me. Can you send that uh, to your husband? Brittany, Chris? you know we're on live right now. Yes, and I missed that. Inform so, me before. Just Hugh, kidding. good to see you though, Hugh. We're not missing you. Rosie says yes. So we did whirlpools all the time. Oh yeah, whirlpools were awesome, man. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. So anyways, but yeah, um what were we talking about today? Like where is you had a great critical so, question. So tell today. them what how what brought up this question. Okay, the, what brought up this question was we were talking about uh, donuts last week and Boy, you're Danny's about donuts. donuts. Yeah, I Danny's. talked about Danny's donuts. So I literally got up. Oh, by the way, and I went to bed at like 12 o'clock because we didn't get back till super late. So this is a little bit of sacrifice, you know, but yeah, just to show how much I love you guys and the tech team and everybody, Pastor Jeff, everybody was here. And Jesus. I was, yes, Jesus. Yep, and I was going to get some from my family. I drove over to Danny's oh, Donuts yeah, yes, this went morning. Jesus yes. Donuts. Okay, I got you. And as I drove by, and I should have taken a picture of this, but it said closed July 5th and 6th. The nerve. The nerve of Danny to close. Yes. And so I drove from there, and then on my way here, I got to 85 at the Jefferson exit, and I, was, and I saw a Bojangles. So I said, what's better than, if you can't have a donut, the next best thing is a biscuit. Bojangles, it's rumored that they don't even know what a calendar looks like. They're That's, always open. They're always open. That so, is true. Yeah. So. And good to see you, Alyssa. Hopefully, Jesse is up and watching as well, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so, Donut Bojangles. So, this led me to this question is what, or not Donuts and Bojangles. Well, it was Donuts, then Bojangles. What is the best biscuit? Or what is your, and we want to hear from you this morning, what is your go to biscuit in the morning? If, depending on where you're at. Yeah. So, so if you wake up, Hopefully you did this morning. The Sunday morning lobby. For the Sunday morning lobby. And you're right. watching right now and you hear the rustling of paper in the background. That's called a bag. They put biscuits in those. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you confirm that we do? I did stop yeah. by Bojangles Bo. Biscuits. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you woke up this morning, which we hope and pray you did. If not, we'll talk about that some other time. But, uh, but what, what's going on is where do you go? To get your biscuit or breakfast, could I even say? Yeah, yeah. Is that I, fair? I say biscuit. I say right. biscuit. All right. And one of the reasons I say this. Why are you yelling at me, man? Sorry, <laughs> I get kind of passionate about this. Is uh, anybody out there know about the old McDonald's, the way McDonald's used to make things, and I've, the way I've McDonald's made... is today? McDonald's is horrible, dude. McDonald's is the worst, and I hope nobody out there works for McDonald's. <laughs> if you do. There's we're, other places. Sorry. There's other places you can work. So, go somewhere else. Because if McDonald's you had to go to McDonald's and it's the only place, and you're super hungry, hadn't eaten in three days, what biscuit are you getting at McDonald's? Oh Lord. Uh, When's the last time you got a biscuit from McDonald's? I guess, man. If I'm going, <laughs> I'm getting an egg McMuffin. Egg McMuffin. That's I'm, a pretty good choice. Hey, when I was skinny and I didn't gain weight, I used to get the, the biscuits that had like the syrup in them. McGriddle. McGriddle. Yes. McGriddle. Jonah, you still eat those? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're young. 
You, I can't eat those anymore. A, it makes my teeth feel like I'm from a wax factory. It's weird. Like, it's weird, man. Like, my, my teeth feel weird. Like, I don't know. Maybe I need... So you just said Wax Factory, which make, took me back to St. Augustine in the Wax Museum. Yeah, that's what right I'm saying, there. man. Go, <laughs> go when next time and touch their teeth. And that's what yeah, I mean. I can't do that. Okay. Because <laughs> they, they look so real. Like it's, that's so Remind cool. me one day to tell you lovely people out there in internet land about my Ripley's Believe It or Not uh, setting off the alarm. <laughs> I, I didn't believe. I, I kept telling something was like a mirage. What, what are those things called? A uh, mirage. Hologram. 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 It was like uh, one of those like leprechauns jumping out of the out of his pot of gold, and he looked real. So I jumped over the rope to see if he was real. It was a hologram, and the alarm went off. <laughs> Fortunately, I was near an emergency exit, which that alarm went off, and I just, I darted out the door <laughs> and left everybody else there, except a couple of band members that I was with, and nice. anyways, we broke the law, so it was cool. Um, nobody got hurt, Oh man! but anyways, yeah, biscuits, I guess, my favorite, my favorite place if I want a biscuit right now is in Jefferson, Georgia, if mm -hmm. you're watching from out of state. It's a place right there uh, at uh, 11 and Jackson Trail, and it's a lady. Her name is Linda, mm -hmm. and uh, ironically, her breakfast place is called Linda's. Linda's. Yeah, so amazing biscuits, amazing biscuits. So. Yeah. What, like what about that. you? Dude, um, I don't really order biscuits from uh, so Cole McDonald's. Nor oh, we're talking about McDonald's. Yeah, nor oh. did I really order them from Chick Fil A either. Nah, the Chick Fil A's biscuits are whack. Sorry, yeah, they're not good, dude. Sorry, bro. So I would, no, I would have the to. The chicken's great. So on fast food chains, biscuits I'd have to raise my hand and say I think Bojangles still makes the best biscuit. If you biscuit. just gave me one biscuit and that's all I could eat, just a biscuit, yeah, with butter on it. Is it Bojangles for fast food biscuit? I don't know. Give me the side shot right here when I say this. It's controversial. Hardee's does not have a bad biscuit either. Pretty good biscuit. Yeah. Pretty good sausage, yeah. even chicken biscuit. Steak. I think it's steak. Steak, yeah, I steak, steak and steak. gravy biscuit. Ooh, that one. You can take, it, take me off of that now. That's good. But, uh, yeah. So I don't know how people feel <laughs> about that. saw that shot. That's hilarious. Adam Brown hilarious. brought up a good point, too. Rest in peace to biscuits from Parms. That used to be a great spot. Well, yeah, they made their commerce. Are they closed? They have been closed. Yes, done for good. They're done for good. Yep. Well, their biscuits were like like continents. They were. They were too big. Continents. They were too big, man. <laughs> you can't eat those, man. And if you do, uh, honestly, I worry about you. Paul Fields knows about that. Good to see you, Paul, this morning. Yeah, we we have people sitting in here at, for our really first time. Oh, hey, so when we went to Krispy Kreme a couple weeks ago, we were singing, mm -hmm. and uh, it was Father's Day. And an awesome family was sitting there listening to us about the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, they, uh, the kid came up to me afterwards, and I guess he thought we were like peddlers on the street. He handed me we a could get, we could be, we he could handed be. me a dollar. <laughs> he gave me a he dollar. He did. Man. I was there. He totally did. And for a moment, like I really wanted to take it <laughs> because because I'm poor and I can do a lot with a dollar, especially <laughs> if I don't tell my kids that I have that dollar. So. I can do I can do some damage with a dollar, man. So he was super sweet. It was pretty cool. It yeah, but uh, awesome. uh, ultimately I rejected the dollar. Told he him did. to scram. He did. Beat it, kid. You, we're out. I think you quoted him the parable of the rich young ruler or something like that. I too. did. I mean, <laughs> I'm, usually when you're when I'm out, especially like Kroger's and Walmart's, it's all parables. That's all I do. It, speaking it, parables. It's speaking parables. Yeah, just to everybody. And now it's even harder having to do it if I wear a mask. That is very true. So. It's, it's like the parable that mumbles. So, but whatever. I, whatever. I digress. Whatever. But uh, now we're excited about the service. Hey, let them know about some stuff. Yeah. We, uh, my so wife texted number me. Number one thing is that we are coming back next week. <laughs> yes, Whoa. yes. Somebody yes. out there. We got people sitting out there. Get excited. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. We are coming back next week. So it's going to be amazing coming back for both services, 9 and 11. 11. There is one thing that you can help us with on that, and that is to, we'll have a registration for the services. There's no tickets or anything. I mean, I guess you could have you at the door, and you could we could sing Sunday morning lobby as they come in, maybe. Probably. We, could, we might be able to do that, but there's no tickets or anything. We just, we just ask if you would register. I believe that's going to be up tomorrow, just yeah. to let us know which service you're planning on coming. We, we want to be prepared. We want to be ready for you. We'll be doing all the social yeah. distancing, all the safe, make this a safe place. 
uh, for you and your family. It's going to be a family worship style. That's what we're calling it. The family how, how do you feel as the worship pastor coming back and, I mean, being able to lead a congregation and worship in Jesus? I mean, that's, oh yeah, it's exciting. Well, it's been like three months. It's been nuts, man. I, and honestly, I've never had that in my whole life. This has no. been the first time in my whole life. Yeah, I've I mean, been a, I've been away so long. Like the neck in my ear, I, I believe it's getting bigger. Is it? It's growing. It's growing. It's, it's, it's yeah, stressed it's out. Yes. Yeah, so out. no, I can't wait. And then you, you as a, as a worship uh, pastor and leader, uh, you know, I mean, and an extrovert. Let's put that out there too. You right? are an extrovert. I'm more of an introvert. Like if you first meet me, believe it or not, I don't really say a whole lot. I ain't got a whole lot to say. But uh, Cole, on the other hand, you come alive, live though, buddy. When it is clutch you, time, I will come alive for the people. For the people. For but anyways, people. I. Uh, I'm excited, man. It has been crazy. Uh, oh, it's going to be up this afternoon, in fact. So, okay. real quick, oh, uh, Brit, Chris's wife, Brittany, who is also our connections director, if you didn't know that, does an awesome job with all that. She wanted me to let you know that everything will be up this afternoon, so you can start registering this afternoon. Do we know what time, Brittany? Is it? And Brittany, she's like this, like, can you put that object in somewhere we're talking to? <laughs> so, where are you? <laughs> so, talk to us, oh, mighty. PV of name Brittany uh, of Shire. Uh, uh, Charlotte had a good question for our commerce folks. We will not start off meeting in the commerce room. Uh, we'll talk about that. Our first couple of Sundays back, we're all going to be together right here in family worship, so we know who to expect, yeah. expect and everything. Kids there. area is, is is closed. That is correct. No so, kids area. So this so. is why we're calling it family worship. That's right. So we want you to be aware of that. Yep. We want you to come. We want you to have fun, uh, man. I mean, I'm excited, man. We've got like four minutes left of the lobby, but uh, I'm excited. Hey, Joseph's on this morning. Joseph, good to see you, man. Good to oh, see Eterno, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Erica, Yeah, Jackie, everybody. Good to yeah. see you. Madison, so, good to see you. Yeah, it's exciting, man. We're excited. How much about, time we got? Like three minutes. Three around. minutes. So, yeah, and, and if you didn't catch it, this will be the last time I'm on the lobby for a minute. That's right. That's for, right. For a, little, for a little while. I'll, I'll jump in every once in a while. Cole will still be... I will up. be doing it some. I have a sneaky suspicion things are going to get busy really quick, too. Probably. But we do have a plan for the Sunday morning lobby. It's going to be really good. I'll be a part of it next week for sure. Yeah. We might have a special guest a as well. A light special guest. Special guest as well. And so our, our adventures have taken us a long way. I wish we had like a cool emotional video mm -hmm. to share. Mm -hmm. But uh, our, our journeys have taken us to where we will... Probably, I would say, and this is the first time I've even talked to you about this, yep. I would even say starting maybe in August, mm -hmm. we'll start doing a Wednesday night Sounds uh, good live. How That's about right. that? Sounds good. Wednesday night live. Yeah. So we want you to show up. We want you to be there. We'll have like a ton of like information about that. Well, we won't be at a, like, <clears throat> we may be at a physical location on Wednesday night live. Sometimes. Who knows? Look, here's the deal. We don't even know what we're talking <laughs> about until they tell us 10 seconds. Until they say 10 seconds to lobby yeah. Cole and I will start singing Backstreet Boys songs to each other, and maybe even maybe even some NSYNC songs. And you know what? If you're lucky, you'll get a New Kids on the Block song. I don't know. Yeah, we don't I can't know. Do that. Don't yell at us anymore. We don't know what we're doing. We yes. just do it. So we're so unorganized that it almost looks Think, organized. Yeah, that's right. Things we learned this morning. One, we're coming back next week. 9-11 registration for that will be up this afternoon so don't miss that yeah. there's no tickets it's just to let us know who's coming family worship atmosphere so kids families together no kids so there's week. not going to be a guy when you get out of your car hollering step right up come here, come here. you know there's nobody like this it's not a carnival it's a ch church service where we worship christ you don't need a ticket you just need to come on in and let's <clears throat> excuse me let's worship and have a good time that's and right. uh, man, that's, right. that's about it, man. Hey, Della, good to see you. They're telling us we got one minute. Yeah, they. I mean, they, yeah. Jackie, did so, I say? I think I already said good morning, Jackie. Well, say it again. Jackie. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, man. So we've got a ton of people. I think Brittany, if we didn't mention everything, uh, I need a lot of grace. So good. yeah, no, we did everything right. I think so. And we're good. Hey, we got about thirty seconds. We're gonna sign off. We're about to go. Here's the deal. Here's what's gonna happen. We're going to go to a countdown. Stay online. Do not leave. That's Stay right. online. Share this. If you don't share this, I'm going to tell you, then if you, I don't know what to say about that without offending you. So I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> share it. We love you. We love you. We love you. So of share you. it. Like it. Do all that. Be ready for worship. we got live worship coming up in just yeah. about five minutes. In case so. you didn't notice. 
Yeah. Live, live, yeah. live worship. Live worship. So uh, it's going to be good, man. We God's got live good. preaching. Pastor Jeff is in the house. And when we, it's time for us to go, we talk a lot faster and over each other. So That's it right. makes total yeah. sense. Love you guys. Peace. See ya. Don't.
Good morning, church. No matter where you're watching from, no matter what's going on, uh, we are excited because we have the opportunity to rejoice in a God that is good. We get the opportunity that he allows us to lift our voices, to lift our hands in song and in praise. You see, worship isn't just singing. Worship isn't just the message that you'll hear later. But worship is our life and how we live and how we live it out and who we live it out for. Everybody's worshiping something today. And so my challenge to you is to trust in, 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 in our God's yes and his amen. As we sing, as we, as we give him praise, man, be excited today because this is a day that he has made and he has told us to rejoice and be glad in it. And that's what we're going to do. We've got some friends here in the worship center. That's where we are. In uh, Southside, that's in our worship center. We're sitting here playing, and we've got some friends here with us. And we're inviting them to sing. Because worshiping is being active. As we sing, here we go. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. Draw me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Give her mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can hear the sing. Faithful.
wants your faithfulness and I will rest in your promises my confidence oh is your faithfulness sing it again I will rest in your promises my confidence oh is your faithfulness sing it faithful
say building our life upon his love when we say that it is a firm foundation what we're saying church what we're saying is what God says is that to have a firm foundation to have a strong relationship with Jesus man you've got to build your faith on his truth and his truth you see, the Bible says His truth will set us free. Well, His truth is His word, His promises, His yes, and His amen. And His promises are always, always what's best for us. His truth is the only thing that can ever set us free. You want happiness in your life. I challenge people every time they say that to me, that they want happiness. I tell them to start with holiness, and you'll find happiness there. Find your hope, find God's holiness, and be like Him as He is holy, and then you will find a happiness that will last in eternity. So, Father, we love you today. We pray for our pastor as he comes. We pray for we pray for everything today. We're trusting you in a lot of uh, ways that we 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 don't have control, and that honestly is the way it should be. So just with your eyes closed, wherever you are, with your eyes closed, may your head bow. Uh, Man, just focusing honestly on who God is. As we just sing this, I will build my life upon your love. It's a firm foundation. You sing that. I will build my life upon sing it out. Sing it loud. Love. Sing it louder than you ever have. Because his promises will never I let us down. One more time, we sing it. Sing it 
Though we stumble, though we fall, though we doubt, we can trust that we are standing. No matter, no matter how many times we fall and it feels like the dust is all around us and we can't see, when, when the dust settles and everything clears, God, you are standing. You are standing. You are standing for us. God, you are standing because you are a foundation that never falls and never fails. We love you. We praise you. It's in your name we give thanks. And all God's people, we say it everywhere. Amen. God bless you guys. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Southside Online today. My name is Jeff Williams. I'm the lead pastor here at Southside Church, and I just want to say a big old welcome home today. Welcome home, man. It feels a little more like church. We got some people sitting in the room, and uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. I'm even a little nervous today. It's crazy, man, to think, think like that. But I, I, I tell you, why, why do I get nervous? Well, there's people here. And two, the one eye don't lie, okay? So uh, here it is. And man, we're excited about uh, being able to know that the comeback is less, na- it's actually one week away. So uh, you can give like, I hope, on- online thumbs up, claps, all kinds of exciting stuff like that. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little tired today. Last night around my house sounded like a war zone. Uh, I guess because there wasn't one fireworks show, everybody in, the war, in, a, in America tried to do their own. So uh, it, was, it kept us up last night, but it was a lot of fun to know that that was all going on around us. And um, I want to invite, I want to thank you for joining us online today. If you are a guest with us or you haven't done this before and you've been watching for a while, I would love for you to take uh, your phone or maybe take a screenshot of this or put it over in the comment feed. Just text the word or type the word welcome. And you can do it to this number, 706 706- uh, 449-0870. It's on the bottom of the screen. And uh, we would love to connect with you and just say hello today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, it is, it is, it, we're inviting you in to a life of mission, of helping us build real followers of Jesus uh, so that we can make it real easy to go to heaven from right here in Northeast Georgia. And as I sit back and think over the four months that we have been online, one, I never thought we would be online that long. I I thought we would be back so much sooner. Um, two, as I look at today, uh, the future, um, a- as far as what's going to happen with COVID-19 and, and all the other crazy things that are going on around us, makes things feel uncertain and somewhat uh, unsettling. Okay, a lot unsettling. Um, but here's what I know. The Lord deals in futures. 
Okay? The Lord will meet you in your past and he'll change it and transform it. He'll meet you in your present and take you to a different place in your life. But God always deals in futures. And, uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today through the letter of, of 1 Peter. Uh, Peter wrote this letter. It's some 30 years after the, the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. And so Peter is now a, a patriarch of the faith. He's leading. He's building the church. He's, he's writing encouraging letters to give people hope in the midst of suffering and trials that they were going through. And uh, so today, um, that's what we're going to look at. This week is 1 Peter, next week 2 Peter, and then we'll deal with the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John as we move into what seems to be very applicable at this time, the book of Revelation. So we're excited about reading through the New Testament and going through all of these things together. So I'm going to swap. I have my Bible. Why do I have my Bible? Because my daughter is in the room today, and I wanted her to know that Dad has not gone crazy crazy. He's got his Bible, okay? There she is. She's very happy about that, my uh, conservative fundamentalist. But now I'm swapping in her eyes and going liberal, all right? I am not. It's because I have 47-year-old eyes and I can't see, okay? So uh, here's the deal today. Uh, the letter that Peter writes to us as we walk through this series called The Church Without Walls. I don't know if you know this or not, but the church is not a building. The church is not made up of, I used to hear when it was in a brick building, which we are, a brick and mortar, uh, the church is made up of people. And uh, when the Holy Spirit came to inhabit our lives, he came to fill us. We became the church. We are his people. As Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, You are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a people belonging to God so that, you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Here's the deal. When the Lord deals in futures, there's always a so that for you. There is always a so that. No matter what we're going through, no matter what difficulty or trial or tribulation we are facing, God always has a so that for you. And so 1 Peter is a letter of hope and encouragement. It is a letter of second third, and fourth chances. Praise God, we need that today, don't we? And so in the midst of suffering and pain uh, that attempted to derail their faith, Peter provides a letter of triumphant faith. So here's the breakdown. Chapter number one teaches us how to deal with suffering and pain. We're going to live in that today. Chapter number two shows us how God is building us into his church to be a difference-making force in this world. Chapter 3 shows us why we need to live with submission and respect. Chapter 4 teaches us the need for us to grow up in our faith so that chapter 5 we can stand firm when the enemy comes against us. And that's what God tells us to do when the enemy is like a roaring lion. There's only one lion that I know in the spiritual realm. It's the lion of Judah. His name is Jesus. But the Bible says that the devil wants to be like him. He is like a roaring lion. He may be loud, but he ain't got what Jesus has got. And so don't listen to the sounds of those who are like a lion. Give your life to the one who is the lion, the reigning king of kings and lord of lords. And the people sitting in the room today ought to say amen because the preacher is preaching, all right? Here we go. Don't allow the trauma of the present to blur the vision of the future. We should not allow the trauma that we are experiencing today to blur the vision of the future. Here's what I want you to know. No matter what you're facing today, there's a reason for it. And I'd hate to hear it when people say that to me. And I almost cringe to say it to somebody else. But there is a reason for it. And God can be found in the midst of it. But I know this, God can also be found on the other side of it. And so today, when we read 1 Peter chapter 1, I want you to know this. There is a reason for it. And so, number one, we're going to look at hardships. Because hardships can lead to hope. And hope can lead to holiness. And holiness always leads to heaven. 
Here it is. First Peter chapter number one. I see on the iPad, this is what I can do. I can make it smaller or I can make it bigger. And that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so here it is. Hardships. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Boy, was he ever. Peter was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He said to the temporary residents, to the temporary residents that are believers who have been dispersed. Why were they dispersed? Because of persecution, because of hardships and trials and tribulation that Jesus promised would come to them. John 16, 33, he tells us in this life, you'll have trials and tribulations, you'll have hardship and pain. He said, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. They're living this out. He said to those who are dispersed in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, and then he says this, chosen to those dispersed but those who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, which means this, God knows. God knows everything. He knows the beginning and the end. So God knows it all, okay? There's nothing you can do to escape his presence or his knowledge. You have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and set apart by the Spirit for what? For obedience and for sprinkling with blood of with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you. I'll tell you, if somebody could multiply something to me today, I would love for it to be grace and peace. If something could be multiplied and given out freely to a world that seems like it's gone absolutely crazy, it would be grace and peace. And so when we look around at the hardships that people are experiencing today, the ones that we are living through, the uncertainty of times, all of these different things. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Every phase of life has difficulty. But there's a so that with all of those things. And the so that is so that we can declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Why? Because God always deals in futures. Here, Peter's primary purpose are to those who felt isolated, insignificant, and inferior because of what was going on around them. His primary purpose was to strengthen their faith and lead them to victory, okay? Our trials never surprise God. Your trials, my trials, never catch God unaware. He knows where they are. Well, if God knows where they're, what's going on, why isn't he here? God is here. The Bible tells me, and it's a promise, and it's yes and amen, that that he is an ever-present help to those who are in need. That tells me God knows right where you are. And he is waiting on you to say, yes, well, I want him to take the pain, the hardship, the trial away. Well, maybe God uses the pain, the hardship, and the trial to make us more like him, to mold us into the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, the ease and comfort of life does not do that. It's the refining process of the fire that makes us more like Jesus. And so Peter is telling us here to these people, his introduction is hard times have come, but you have been chosen and set apart by God and the Holy Spirit to be used for him and for his glory. And so are you willing, are you willing to say yes to the pain? Are you willing to say yes to the pain of life, okay? God will turn every circumstance, sorrow, hardship, and difficulty into a tool for spiritual maturity if you let it. So are you willing to say yes to the hardships of life today? You might as well. You're going to go through them anyway, okay? And so I want to look for the reason and the purpose for which they're happening so that God can make me more mature and more like him. So what we learn in the first two verses here is this. There's a reason for the hardships. But I don't want to leave with that today. It would, be, it would be sad if we had to go, well, thanks for joining us today. God bless you. We hope to see you next week. Because if we left in the hardship, which is what most people do, we never get to the living hope. We never understand and get to the place where we experience the hope, the confident assurance that God is working for me and in me for his glory. And so as hardships lead us to hope, this is what he says in verse number three. He says, praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According 
to his great mercy. See, this is according to his mercy. According to his great mercy, he has given us, he has given you a new birth into a living hope. He's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So what has God done? God has, through his great mercy, given you and me access, rebirth into a living hope. It's not a, uh, it's not a hope like we use today. Well, I hope things get better, or I hope this happens, or I hope we have Georgia football in the fall. <laughs> Anyway, but I hope those things happen. No, this is the hope which is a confident assurance. It is reality that it is going to happen. And so a living hope means that that confident assurance is alive and living in you on a daily basis. And this is what he says. He, I love this part. He says, and into an inheritance. It leads you into a living hope, but it also leads us into an inheritance. What if I told you today you had a priceless inheritance waiting for you? Because you do. But it's kept in heaven. He says this, it is imperishable, it is uncorrupted, and it is unfading, and it is kept in heaven for you. You've got an inheritance waiting on you. The Lord Jesus Christ paid for it and is offering it with his blood. And it is being kept in heaven for you. And that inheritance is imperishable, it is uncorruptible, and it is unfading. And it is sitting there waiting for you. And so God gives us a new birth into a living hope. He's given us a new birth into an inheritance that cannot go away. And then he says this. He says, you are being protected by God's power. I'm going to tell you this, if God were to lift his hand off of us, who knows what could happen? We are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. The salvation that you have, if you have said yes to the grace of Jesus Christ, is waiting to be revealed. When? Right now. God saved you so that... So that he could take that salvation and reveal it to a lost and dying world. And the Lord knows we need it to be revealed today. And Peter said, rejoice in this. He said, you rejoice in this. Though for now, for a short time, you have had to struggle in various trials. Amen to that. And he says, so that, there it is again. So that the genuineness of your faith which is more valuable than gold, which perished though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The purpose of trials is to sift out what is genuine in our faith. The purpose of the trial is to sift out what is genuine and real so that it comes out and it's revealed in our lives. Here's what I have to say today. And here's where we have to be okay. What if you never get a reason for the pain that you're going through? What, what, if, what if the Lord doesn't come back in 2020 and we live another 40 years? What if we don't have a reason for 2020? Are you okay with that? Boy, it gives a whole new meaning to hindsight. It's 2020, right? It's like that, that, that phrase came from a time traveler in the future that says, hey, buckle up, buttercup. Maybe, maybe, maybe Marty McFly really is real, okay? And so he came back from the future and created the phrase, hindsight is 2020. I'll say this. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. If you don't if you don't believe that God is big enough to meet you in the just the muck of life then how could he be big enough to save you from the grips of hell? 
This is a living hope. It's not just a future hope. It's not a past hope. It's a living hope. And it's ready to be revealed and made known through you today. That's why we call this the church without walls. All this is is a sending ground. All this is is an aircraft carrier that puts, puts the right tools and weapons in you so that you can go accomplish the mission that God has made for you so that, see, God deals in futures. And so today, there's a reason for what we're going through because the hardships, the hardships will lead to hope and the hope can lead to holiness. Check this out. He says this, therefore, and this is where it gets applicable. Therefore, with your minds ready for action. Are you ready today? Is, are, are you ready? With your mind ready for action, he says, be self-controlled. Be self-controlled and serious. And set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Three things. He says, number one, set your mind, get it ready for action. That's the short-term view. Be serious. He says, be, be serious, be committed, be self-controlled. That's, that's, that's right here and right now. And set your hope completely on the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that's the long-term view. So there's a short-term view and a long-term view. And then he says this, as obedient children, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of our former ignorance. When we weren't aware of the grace, when we weren't aware of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, but as the one who called you is holy, you are also to be holy in some of your conduct. Doesn't say that. He says, be holy in all of your conduct. You know what holy holiness is? Holiness is complete devotion. Holiness is Olivia Newton-John singing, hopelessly devoted. Do, do. All right? That's what it is. It's hopelessly devoted to you, Lord Jesus. He says, for you know, and this is how we end it today. For you know, for you know that you were redeemed. You know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life that has been inherited from your fathers. One thing that we have been passed that has been passed down from generation to generation since Adam and Eve is sin. And sin always leads to an empty life. It'll take you further than you wanted to go. It'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. And it'll cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. But sin always leads to an empty way of life. That's what the ignorance of the grace of God will do. It'll take us where we don't want to go. But you know that because you have been redeemed. He says this, not with perishable things, not with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of times for See, as followers of Jesus Christ, we cannot forget the first chapter of our faith. And we cannot lose sight of the last chapter of our faith. You see, the last influences the first. And the first influences the last. And so live each day in full view of the final chapter story. See, when I think about hardships and pain, there's a reason for it. Because hardships will lead me to hope. And hope will lead me to holiness. 
and holiness will always lead me to heaven. And so today, the takeaway is real simple. The Lord always deals in futures. God wants to meet you in the present today to let you know that he's redeemed you from your past because he's got a great future for you. So say yes to him today. Say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and don't you ever look back. It's very simple. If you don't know Jesus, today is your Savior. I would love to introduce you to him. I'd love for you to be able to say yes to him today. It's real simple. If that's you and that's what you want to do, we're going to put a prayer up on this screen. And I'm going to ask you to believe in your heart and confess him with your mouth. Say this with me. Say, Father God, I believe in you. And I believe that you sent your son to be my Savior. Jesus, forgive me of my sin by your grace and restore me to you. Jesus, be the Savior and Lord of my life. Help me follow you today. Amen. See, it's real simple today. It's real simple. You can let us know that you said yes to Jesus in the comment feed just by, just by simply texting or writing the word Jesus. Or you can text the, num the name Jesus to 706-449-0870. You can do that today and let us know you said yes to his great name. Guys, I want to thank you so much for being here today, for joining us online, and knowing that next week we will be live right here on this property in person, but we will also be online because we want to meet you in both places. And so we invite you to come next Sunday, be a part of this day with us. And we invite you, if you can't do that, watch us online and still engage and still say yes to Jesus. I invite you today to be a part of what God is doing on this property. You can do that through a tithe or you can do that through an offering. An offering as simple as $5 will prepare a bag of food for a child. It'll buy a meal for a nurse. It'll take care of a first responder. As simple as that. We can see God make a difference in this community today. You can text the word give today to 706-449-0870. You can go to southside.online. You can either fi even follow the link in the comment feed there, and we would love to connect with you and, 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 and invite you to be a part of what God is doing here at Southside Church. Thank you for being a part of this day with us. We love you. We're thankful for you. God bless you. And we will see you next Sunday right here. Have a great day.